Hello, everybody. This is Dr. Bob Gebe uh, for Ask Dr. Bob. And Ask Dr. Bob is where you ask me, Bob Gebe, the Chief Scientific and Medical Officer here at the American Diabetes Association, your questions about diabetes. Um, each month, we pick a topic area. Uh, this month, we're going to talk about physical activity. It's summertime, so uh, it seems like a good topic for us to delve into. And uh, for those of the are those of you that are new welcome and great to have you here and uh um and uh, the old timers hey great to be part of this and spread the word uh you can also follow me at uh, dr bob gebe on twitter linkedin facebook so that we can continue the conversation and so without further ado let us jump in and so um you know, as I said, our questions and our topic here is really about physical activity. So, um, you know, good broad question here to start off is uh, how can physical activity benefit people with diabetes? Well, turns out there are a lot of ways. And so that's a little be a theme of how, how uh, great physical activity is for your general health and particularly for people with diabetes. So in what way does it help people with diabetes? Well, one, it tends to lower your blood glucose levels. Um, and so we'll talk more about that. But in general, uh, people that exercise, their A1C goes down, that three-month average of your blood glucose is. And we know that how your blood glucose levels are a big predictor as to whether you're going to develop uh, potentially complications, problems related to your diabetes. So number one, it helps with your blood glucose levels. But that's not all. It also lowers your blood pressure. So for people that have high blood pressure, lowers their blood pressure, and it can help prevent you from developing high blood pressure, which is something very common for people with diabetes. And then it also lowers your cholesterol. Um, again, good for you. And so, you know, we, we sometimes talk about the ABCs of diabetes, A1C, blood pressure, cholesterol, Exercise is one of the things that actually gets all three of those things. And all three of those things help to lower your risk of heart disease. So lots of good things with exercise. So the next question is, um, um, can regular physical activity reduce the risk of developing type 2 diabetes? And yes, it can. And there's actually a really big study with thousands of people that showed that a number of years ago. Um, they randomly took one group of people uh, and did a lifestyle program that included physical activity and another group that didn't. And those that did physical activity and watched their weight uh, lowered their risk of developing type 2 diabetes by two thirds. So really big difference. Um, and then you might ask, like, well, what was the physical activity to th that they did? Did they run half marathons? No, really, very doable. Here's what they did. They, they walked at a good pace in general. That was one of the exercises. They walked 150 minutes per week. So think about that. That's like a half hour, five days a week. That's, you know, potentially doable walk around your neighborhood, uh, um, walk in a shopping mall if it's too hot, any of those kinds of things, you only need 150 minutes uh, per week. So 30 minutes a day for five days. So doable. Think about that. You could lower your risk or your family members and loved ones could lower their risk of developing diabetes by two thirds. So next question. Okay. So what type of physical activity? And so this person wants to really get into like, what's the specifics? So I talked about walking. It doesn't have to be walking. So here, the, the general idea is 150 minutes of moderate, at least moderate exercise. So, you know, walking at a good clip is that. Um, uh, but you can do anything else uh, that is physically active. Um, for 150 minutes uh, a week and and that you should spread that activity out at least across three days so don't do 150 minutes one day well i mean it's good you can do it uh, not say don't do it 
but to get the benefit, you need to spread that activity across the week. So at least over three days. So 150 minutes, that's the number to remember. And guess what that number led to? You may have heard this idea of walking 10,000 steps, right? Walking 10,000 steps a day. Uh, if you have a smartphone, it can count that. You can sort of see where you're at. Um, that really comes from this 150 minutes because for most people to get to 10,000 steps, you sort of got to do a little bit more than your normal activity. You know, many of you people say, I have my patients say, well, I'm active. I go up and down stairs. I'm cleaning in the house. Well, that's usually not enough to get you to that 10,000 steps. So think about counting your steps as well. And again, if you have a phone that counts your steps, take a look. Take a look at what your average number of steps are. That's a good starting point. So what else is good about exercise? What other kind of exercise? Resistance training. So what does that mean? Or strength training? What does that look like? Well, um, that can be a lot of different things. Um, it could be calisthenics, uh, a workout video that you could do at home, um, weight training, also wonderful, any of these kinds of things. Something where you're pushing against resistance. Uh, uh, there are resistance bands that you can stretch. Um, again, doing that two to three times a week is also helpful because it keeps your muscles uh, uh, fit. And it's particularly important as you age. So as we get older, particularly people that let's say are age 60 or above, um, have a real risk of losing muscle mass. And so it's really important to do some strength training, some resistance training, so that you don't lose that muscle mass because the muscle mass is really important. It's important for your metabolism, your general health, and it also prevents falls. So we talked a little bit about how much and what type of activity. What about, what about young people? What about children? Uh, what do they need to do? And by the way, the recommendations I gave about exercise, true for type 2 diabetes or people with type 1 diabetes. So it's really across the board. Just want to say that. So what about kids? What should they be doing? Well, kids should be doing 60 minutes a day of some kind of moderate activity. Um, and that can, that's an area that we probably all need to work with our children over because uh, that's not, you know, it's easy to sit in front of a screen and not be active when you're a kid. So getting them out for an hour a day, 60 minutes a day of, of moderate activity. Um, um, and then they need to do some kind of uh, strength or weight bearing or bone health kind of exercise to help. So being involved in any kind of organized sports, fantastic. Can't recommend it enough for kids. Uh, so all of those types of things are important to think about. Okay, so let's move on. Um, and someone worried about complications says, um, you know, what, what can physical activity do to help me in terms of complications of diabetes? Well, a lot of that is through the fact that I said earlier, being active lowers your blood glucose, improves your blood pressure, improves cholesterol, and all of those things, if you improve them, lower your risk of complications. So here's something that comes up a lot. And so let me talk about this. What is it? What happens when you exercise in terms of your blood glucose? And some of you, uh, particularly people with type 1 diabetes, probably know this you can get low blood glucose after exercise. So what's going on there? Let me start with the physiology. What's happening in your body? So um, very simplistically, for, for glucose, the fuel uh, for your body to get into your muscles, it needs insulin. And so people with type one diabetes don't make insulin, they have to take insulin. People with type two diabetes, take medicines that maybe make them more sensitive to insulin or help them make insulin. And, that, and that's really how a lot of our therapy works uh, in terms of uh, lowering blood glucose. Well, exercise lets glucose automatically get into muscles and you don't even need insulin. So 
um, what happens when somebody exercises is their blood glucose tends to drop. Uh, and so it's important to watch out for that and to prepare for that. And that's the next set of questions I have, or what kind of precautions should you take to avoid hypoglycemia with exercise? Again, who's going to develop hypoglycemia? It's people on insulin or, or taking medicines that can result in their blood glucose dropping too low. So for people with type 2 diabetes, it might be a group of drugs called sulfonylureas, glyburide, glipizide, glomeparide, amaryl, uh, glucotrol. You know, you may have heard of these medicines. Any of those kind of medicines can also result sometimes in your blood glucose getting too low. So anyone who's on any of those things, including insulin, they may get too low of blood glucose. So what do you do about that? Well, when you drop low, you need to take in something sweet uh, to bring your blood glucose up. But what can you do to avoid it? And so there are a couple of things. Um, one is to uh, have your blood glucose a little higher before you start exercising uh, so that you can drop a little and still be in the normal range. And often the easiest way to do that is to exercise after you've eaten. Uh, and you might take even less insulin than you normally would for eating uh, because the exercise is almost, you can almost think of it like acting like insulin. It helps the glucose get into the muscles. So, um, so in general, to avoid hypoglycemia, uh, be careful to uh, uh, have your glucose a little higher before exercise. Or another great solution is to, have a little snack while you're exercising, particularly if you're gonna do that exercise for a longer period of time. Going on a long walk or a hike, carry something in case your blood glucose gets too low, and of course, monitor your blood glucose so you know. If you have a continuous glucose monitor, that's a great way to know, but sometimes you might, some people need to do a finger stick and see where their glucose levels are low as they're exercising. Okay. We've covered a lot of ground. I think I've got uh, maybe just a couple last things. Um, so one, you know, important thing to bring up uh, in terms of exercise, particularly now that it's the summer, is stay hydrated. Uh, and we talked about this uh, last month uh, uh, a bunch, you know, in terms of the heat and diabetes. Well, um, uh, exercise gets you warmer. Uh, you sweat, you lose uh, electrolytes and fluids. So be sure to uh, hydrate well when you exercise. And the last question I have uh, is, <clears throat> is asking, you know, where can I learn more? And I'm going to give you two sp specific places <clears throat> to go to uh, on the American Diabetes Association website to learn more about exercise. And the first is a program uh, that we've developed called Project Power. Uh, it started for kids and it's still there for kids and now we're moving it to adults. Um, it is diabetes.org slash project power. Project Power or look up Project Power. That's a great program that you can enroll online, learn a, a bunch about exercise, their fun activities, their cool things for kids to do. So that's great. Or diabetes.org slash fitness just gives you a lot of good general recommendations. And all of the things that I just talked about are there. So you can, uh, you can take a look there. You can share with your friends. Uh, and I think we are out of questions. And so, um, you know, I hope this was helpful for you. We talked about exercise. This is uh, Ask Dr. Bob, Dr. Bob Gabay, Chief Scientific and Medical Officer here for the American Diabetes Association. Follow me on LinkedIn, on Facebook, uh, Twitter, at Dr. Bob Gabay, and uh, I'll be sharing lots of other information. Otherwise, tell your friends and family to join, and we will see you uh, next month. And have a wonderful rest of your summer. And Try getting out walking a little bit and, and increasing your exercise because there are so many great benefits. So take care.